So say you're trying to make a hexaflexagon out of a strip of paper, and you found that the key to getting a smoothly flexing finished product is to have perfect triangles. And that reminds you of a trick you learned for folding paper snowflakes. See, the easy but inaccurate way to fold paper snowflakes is you fold paper in half, then in half again, and in half again, and then you cut it and unfold it and you've got a snowflakey looking thing. Or you could fold it in half four times to get an even more snowflakey looking thing, but real snowflakes have six fold symmetry. They're hexagony like, whereas this thing has eight fold symmetry, which you figure is just what happens when you fold something in two, and then in two, and then in two, because each time you're doubling the amount of folds, and two times two times two is eight. Wait, that's not right. Let's just put in that extra fold. Eight! Anyway, the point is that to get six-fold symmetry, you can fold the paper in half and then in thirds, which you can do by kind of messing with the two folds until they're even, just like when making a hexaflexagon. Except that if you stop there, you get three-fold symmetry. You have to fold it in half one more time to get six-fold symmetry. And that reminds you of an argument you were having on the internet the other day. You know the kind where someone says something that you know isn't true, but they're convinced they're right because they have this logic-flavored argument that anyone with actual experience in the matter knows is completely disconnected from reality. Like, yes, if you fold a paper in two, and then fold that in two, and then fold that in two again, it has the feel of two times two times two. And yes, two times two times two is eight. But that doesn't mean it's illogical to assert that the resulting snowflake has only four-fold symmetry, and maybe you should put more thought into why that's true instead of repeating over and over all the reasons why your theory makes more sense, and getting defensive about the backlash from people who know you have no snowflake folding experience. Um, anyway, the hexagon connection makes you wonder if you can fold and cut a hexaflexagon to make a hexaflexaflake. You could think about it first, or you could just try it. I mean, maybe you learned from experience that with paper snowflakes, if you cut the entire folded edge off, then it falls apart. So you figure something similar might happen with a hexaflex of flakes, only there's more folded edges. Like, with a snowflake, you can cut off the entire outside part, but if you try to do that with a hexaflexagon, it will soon be hexaflexagon. But you figure you can probably cut a blip out of the center, and that seems to work without it falling apart. But can you still flex it? Mmm, yes! Except your center seems to have decentralized, but if it worked last time, it should work again with this new center, right? And now we know that when we flex it, this center will become decentralized, and the old center will come back. Or not. Both centers can just hang out on the edges, that's good too. Okay, so maybe you annotate your centers so you can see that there's the orange center, yellow center, and pink center, which makes sense because there's three different sides to a hexaflexagon, and each side has its own center. The orange center belongs to the orange side, the yellow center belongs to the yellow side, and finally, the pink side with the pink center. And those are the three sides of the hexaflexagon. Uh, or maybe there's a pink side with an orange center too. I mean, why not? Happens all the time. Of course there's a pink side with pink center and pink side with orange center, and of course there's a pink side with a yellow center too. Somewhere. I mean, it would make sense. Or maybe not. Let's just say the pink side with the yellow center is a theoretical possibility that remains unobserved, as in practice it seems to be unopen upable. But anyway, when you fold the hexaflexaflake for cutting, you notice that all the centers line up, and it doesn't matter which center is the current center. So next time you can cut everything all at once, instead of opening up to flex each time. Of course, this theoretical possibility should probably be tested, because sometimes sciencing your math is a good way to check your thought process and inspire your thinking. And mathematicians often visualize real-world things, or shapes, or the abstract feel of folding when they write down notation. Like, the thing going on in a mathematician's head is not what gets written on paper. Just like how people have all sorts of different things going on in their heads when they say words. But sometimes you accidentally connect ideas to notation the wrong way. Like, you might write down 2 times 2 times 2 and be thinking fold in half, fold in half, fold in half equals 8. Fold snowflake. And the more you connect that real world idea and those abstract thoughts, the more real it seems that three folds in half makes an eight fold snowflake. And when someone says you're wrong, you might be so used to connecting it the old way that it sounds unbelievable that you could be wrong, especially if you're in the habit of thinking very highly of your inexperienced conjectures. So maybe you're very vocal about your very logical snowflake theory, and why should you have to listen to those I actually make paper snowflakes people anyway? And that's a recipe for getting your feelings hurt when you don't understand why everyone thinks you're full of baloney. 
but you know you're right. You know two times two times two equals eight. And if those I actually make paper snowflakes people insist that two times two times two equals four, you challenge them to prove it to you. And if they won't engage, that's just because they're close minded and afraid of discourse, which means you're better than those I actually make snowflakes people, which means you'd feel shame if you were wrong. But if they actually listened or considered your ideas, then they would know you're right, which proves they're not listening, which makes them extra wrong. And the tiny voice inside you that worries that you're wrong evokes such feelings of shame, especially now that you've doubled and tripled down on how much better you are than them. And that shame hurts, which makes you feel like the actual snowflake folders hurt you, which makes them even more wrong. And you're not saying everyone who claims to have ever folded a piece of paper in half three times and gotten fourfold symmetry is lying. I mean, maybe they folded it an extra time and don't remember, or maybe they counted wrong, or someone switched out their snowflake while they weren't looking. You don't claim to know all the reasons someone might be wrong about snowflake folding, but you start a forum for baloney snowflake truthers. You can discuss together the many reasons why actual snowflake folders are so wrong. It's a place for reasonable folks who agree that folding a piece of paper in half three times should yield an eight full snowflake. And you all tell each other constantly how right you are because two times two times two is eight. Yes, you're the authority who should be listened to, and if they won't listen to you, you will make them listen. Anyway. I hope you enjoy this fun holiday craft. See you next year!